So I got asked, where'd your passion from DJing kind of come from? Was it a certain like DJ you saw or is like an album you heard that made you want to like pick it up? Uh, interestingly enough, um, I kind of stumbled upon it. Um, at the time, I was more into breakdancing, and I'm taking it back to when I was 14, so nice. circa, hey. circa 94. Uh, so we had just moved into a, a townhouse, and I thought I was all Billy Badass breakdancer. So I, uh, I heard through the grapevine that there was somebody else there yeah. that was into breakdancing. So I went over there to go meet the guy, and uh, Homeboy had his garage door open, and I saw a set of turntables, and he was mixing. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, oh shit, that looks kind of cool. So my focus was still breakdancing. So then I hit him up and he's like, oh yeah, yeah, you know, a Filipino guy named Robert goes by the name DJ Rex. Shout out. And um, so yeah, we talked and then uh, I my focus ended up shifting to the turntables and I'm like, man, that's kind of cool because I saw him get down. Uh, so he was mixing like house music, so some electronic shit. Yeah. And uh, just, just more hanging out with a guy. You know, I'm in that 14 year, you know, where you're trying to be rebellious and uh, sneak a smoke and shit. Yeah. So he was like, uh, he was like 18, 19 at the time. And uh, yeah, he was, he was like the cool older guy I kind of like hung out with. And um, yeah, and then he just showed me the ropes and uh, little by little um, got my brother into it. And he had a job where I wasn't because I was still young going uh -huh. to school. So he actually started buying the first bit of equipment. So I took advantage of that. And it just took off from there. Uh, I started just mixing music, just um, again, EDM, because that was what I was into, like house music at the time. Uh, and of course, you know, hip hop. Uh, and then um, looking at a catalog for uh, some equipment, I noticed on the front cover, I kept seeing this dude, this particular guy's face everywhere. I'm like, who is this guy? Why, why, why such a big deal? Who is this guy? Uh, I go to find out later on that he's no other than DJ Qbert. Oh, really? So I'm like, I'm like, uh, once I started looking deeper into like who the hell this guy was, because I see him everywhere, uh, then I find out he's this incredible scratch DJ, and he has the crew, and you know, it's got Mixmaster Mike from the Beastie Boys. Oh yeah. Dude. So I'm like, oh damn, that's something cool. So then you know, looking him up and listening, that's where my passion from scratch music came from, and. Um, yeah, I forgot to ask, where was all this? Where'd you grow up? Did you out here or somewhere else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm California native, okay. born and raised. Uh, it's really rare because most people are transplants like myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I mean, it, born in Torrance, but we kind of migrated to the Inland Empire. Gotcha. So what LA people know as the boonies. Uh -huh. uh, so yeah, I'm out, I, I live out there and, and you know, that's where all this happened okay. in, in Ontario. Uh, but yeah, you know, the more I started looking and researching into Qbert, the more the more love I got for scratching. And then uh, you really don't appreciate scratching until you actually try it. Because most people look at it like, oh, you're just oh, rubbing a record I, back and I've forth. I've tried it. It's hard. <laughs> so when you actually get into the technical aspect yeah. of scratching, then you actually appreciate it for what it is. You're like, holy shit, that's actually really hard. Um, and then just knowing more of the intricacies about it, the different types of scratches, it, it just blows your mind. and like any other instrument, you gotta practice your ass off to get good at doing it. So, I, I, I didn't actually, uh, I learned, you know, DJing and stuff at 14, but I didn't do it uh, more officially until I was about 19. Because again, the whole being young and not having money to buy your own shit. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I, I actually uh, went to Arizona for high school because, you know, we moved around and then I was outside of the schooling district. Okay. So we'll fast forward to 19. So here I am, now I got some equipment. Now I'm learning. Uh, slowly, you know, did the whole scratching thing. So uh, just what? little by little been doing it. Uh, there was a period where my equipment went out and uh -huh. I kind of, I was kind of like on a, a lay low for a couple years. Then I got some more equipment and then the fire again, like lit up again. So, so how did you uh, find out about Dirty Machine? Yeah. Oh, that, that, that's uh, crazy. Like, um, I mean, the funny thing, uh, the funny thing is, is um, everybody in the band's like all rock and metal, you know. Yeah. And, and I'm probably the one that knows least about it. Um, <laughs> I've always been uh, like hip hop and uh, EDM and stuff. Yeah. Uh, pretty big ICP fan, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, not until Dave actually, you know. Uh, because with the hip hop aspect, and you know, no disrespect to ICP, because yeah. once I was, once I toured with them and 
like whole new respect. Love the guys to death. But like, again, I was one of the ignorant types where I'm like, oh, that's not real hip hop. Yeah. You know, you gotta have the lyrical and, you know, so um, at the young age, I was a hater. You know, I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna be straight up. Yeah. But I, now, now it's like, I'm a huge fan and their album's like one of my favorites that we toured with, The Great Malenko. I play that shit nonstop and my wife hates it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's take it back. So how'd you find out about Derby Sheet? Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, back to your original question. Yeah. Um, I went to an OTEP concert, uh, this was uh, 2015, uh -huh. um, actually no, my bad, uh, 2013, excuse me, and um, I went to go see OTEP because I, you know, I started getting into like the heavier metal, uh, started with Butcher Babies, and yeah. then I was like, I want more, I want more, came across OTEP, and I'm like, oh, this is my shit right here, this OTEP's my shit, uh, so I went to the concert at Whiskey to see her, and um, and then uh, there was like some bands opening up. Dirty Machine opened up for her, like right before her. And uh, I was just loving the night because I'm like, oh, tip, fuck yeah. And then I see, I see this, you know, these guys up there, and you know, I see the front man with with his red <laughs> Kansas City jersey, and and there was something about them, you know, like like the way they played and, and even the music I liked, yeah. the, the old original Dirty Machine yeah. sound. Uh, and I was just like, man, this this is cool shit. And in my mind, I'm thinking like. If I was a producer, I would sign these fucking guys. I would invest in them, and and because they're going places. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you walk up to them afterwards and say, "Hey, no. you guys need a DJ?" Or? No, no, no. I was just I was a fan for yeah. for a while. Okay. Uh, the way I actually got into the band, which is funny, um, I had just bought a new mixer, so I was so excited to start scratching again. Uh -huh. um, and uh, I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm going I'm I'm to scratch to one of my favorite Dirty Machine songs. Oh. So what I did, just practicing and bullshit like I always do in my room, yeah. um, I was like, man, this sounds really good. And, and, and I just fucking around, I, I, I sent it to them on Facebook. I put it on their Facebook. <laughs> I had no idea, and it's funny how the, how the universe works. Because yeah. at the time, in their band, I guess they were looking for a DJ. They came up to the idea like, oh, we should add a DJ. So there, I guess uh, there was some other cat that went in and tried. Uh, and then, um, just coincidentally, here comes my video on Facebook, and then, um, you know, I see the likes come up, I see the comments, they're like, dude, that's fucking badass, you know, and next thing you know, I got Dave uh, messaging me. Wow. Now, anybody will know Dave, Dave's a crazy dude. Yeah. Like, <laughs> publicly in the comments, he posted his phone number, he's like, call me, my number is 818 da 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 which now it's completely different, so, yeah. you know. Uh, and I mean, even on Instagram, he hit me up. He DM'd me the whole the whole shot. Very him. So I, I wasn't really looking to join a band. That was yeah. just me fucking around. Like, okay, yeah. this is what this is what it'll sound like. But you know, after thinking it long and talking with him because of my situation and everything, I was just like, uh, I was like, all right, I'll do this, man. Let's do it. So cool. So my first show with him was uh, when uh, I guess it was the official show of like the new members of Dirty Machine with uh, with Darren and Mike. Uh, the Viper Room. Uh, no, 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 the whiskey, the whiskey uh, okay. October 2015. Uh, so that was actually my first gig with them, like first official show along with those guys. That's awesome. So from there, it's been no looking back, man. So, That's so cool. That's a very inspiring story. Thanks for sharing that. So let's fast forward now. You guys are working in the studio. This amazing producer has worked on Deftones, Pantera, oh. everyone. Uh, I haven't officially heard the song yet. Darren's kind of described it to me. But I, first thing I said to him, I can't wait to see what you <laughs> add to the song, you know? Yeah, it, it, it's funny because like, even me being the least of the band that knows much about like yeah. the ins and outs of metal and rock, I even knew who the guy was, the producer, yeah. Ulrich Wild. Um, so then I, you know, I knew the history. I'm like, you know, I knew who Deftones was, you know, yeah. because I was more of the like, I I knew the hit singles, you know, I, I wasn't the guy that went out and bought the albums, yeah. and, you know, because I listened to so much other genres. Uh, but I knew who the guy was, and I was like, get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> so, complete honor working with a guy. Now, regarding the song, nothing like you've heard before. It's completely left field from typical Dirty Machine. I mean, it's not bluegrass or anything like that. <laughs> but, EDM or something. You know? <laughs> um, but but it, it's, it's something that, you know, our fans will really appreciate and they'll get down to. Um, but overall, it's something that... Uh, Everybody can can enjoy. Well, I'm kind of curious because what? Where do you go to find like samples and stuff? Because you can't use copyrighted stuff for the most part, right? Or yeah, um, regarding like you know copyright and stuff, you can't really sample you know rap lines and stuff. But yeah. for for scratch DJs, there there still are record stores. You know, 
records still do exist. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um, you got like these little shops that they sell what, what you know what are called scratch records or break records. So it's basically just a, a, a vinyl, full vinyl, with nothing but just audio sounds and clips, sound effects. Oh, okay. So free to use, you know, and um, so in order to find out what I'm going to use for a song, it's it's basically just what hits me. I'll listen to the song, I'll go through, and I'll just fast forward through all my samples. Pretty rigorous, because I'm yeah, in there like two hours, three hours, just going through like beep, bop, er, <laughs> So it's just like, okay, which one's gonna hit? And I'm listening, and I'm like, okay, that one cool. So I'll, I'll write down a notepad, and then I'll keep listening, and then I'll go through the samples I selected and process of elimination. But sometimes I'll know right off the bat, that's the sound. It needs that, you know, depending on the theme of the song or the feeling. Uh, but uh, very hard this song. <laughs> this is my most challenging, challenging uh, track uh, to select the sound bite from. But uh, I got through it. So, awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's exciting. I well, can't I'll let you go. Um, where can we follow you personally on social media? I'm, I'm, I'm a social media whore. I'm fucking everywhere. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, I even joined this new one, Vero. You yeah, know. I've been hearing about that. Is it good? Or? I posted one thing. <laughs> yeah. I, I still don't... Actually, just one more question because I'm a huge Mortal Kombat fan. You wear, Where did you get the uh, Mortal Kombat mask and the idea to wear that? Yeah. Well, again, I'm... I can't say I'm the biggest Mortal Kombat yeah. fan because there's always, there's always oh, somebody yeah. greater yeah. out there. But I'm fucking huge Mortal Kombat fan. That was my shit since it came out, you know, when I was 13, playing that shit at the arcade. But my character before, it started with Scorpion, but then yeah. once I learned of Noob Saibot, that's my dude. Uh, so the reason I wear the mask isn't, you know, aside from paying an homage to the guy, uh, it's more of a stage fright thing. Oh, yeah. Because, like, no matter how many times I get in front of people, when I'm putting the needle on the record, my hand's always like... <laughs> but for whatever reason, I'm covering my face a little bit, I'm that much more comfortable. I like it. So I'm like, okay, well, if I'm going to cover my face with something, what better than fucking Noob Saibot mask, you yeah. know? So that's basically the premise behind it, but yeah, definitely uh, awesome. Mortal Kombat, uh, t tipping of the hat, yeah. Sweet. And then uh, your social media tag? Uh, basically on everything, it's uh, at DJ Akusa. Uh, Akusa spelled E C U S A. Uh, the only one that it's weird on is on Facebook because yeah, you, gotta you gotta, you gotta kind of make it look like your real name. So I had to like fake it. So it's D E E space J space Akusa. So, I love it, man. Thanks so much for sharing yeah, everything, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.